Hey guys, Super Nintendo here, and in addition to liking video games, I also like Star Wars. So I figure I'd give you my impressions of Star Wars Episode Eight: The Last Jedi. So first off, I like this movie. Uh, overall, it was a very good film. I felt that it handled the Star Wars material and universe good. Uh, overall, I suggest that you watch this movie regardless of what other reviewers are saying so that you guys can decide for yourself. Uh, with that being said, uh, going forward I'll be talking into some huge spoilers, so if you haven't seen the movie and you don't want to be spoiled, turn this video off and go and watch the movie. Uh, if you guys have seen the movie, uh, this is kind of like a discussion rather than a review. So uh, I will be discussing what I liked about the movie, what I didn't like about the movie, and what I think is going to happen going forward for Episode 9. So let's start out with things that I liked about the movie. Uh, first off, the Porgs. Uh, Porgs, at first, I thought that they were going to be very gimmicky, but I thought that they were cute but non-intrusive uh, throughout the film. Like, you only saw them, like, a couple of times. Like, I thought it was funny that they infested the Millennium Falcon while they were on the island, and, you know, Chewbacca's eating one of them, and the Porks are, like, you know, looking at them, like, in just, like, awe, like, how could you do this? And I, I just, I thought that it was a good comedic relief in an otherwise very dark film, and the humor worked in that Star Wars sense. So another thing I liked was Ray was revealed to be a nobody. It was really refreshing and relieving because a lot of people had speculated that Ray was going to be Luke's daughter or a sister of Kylo Ren or a descendant of Ben Kenobi or Emperor Palpatine or all of these other crazy things where she was tied to a bloodline of an already established character in the Star Wars trilogy. I didn't want that to happen because the Star Wars universe, at least in the expanded universe, is gigantic. There's a lot more people than, you know, a handful of characters that have force powers. And as it was already kind of established in the prequels that nobody likes to talk about, is that there's a lot of people who could be Jedi and have force powers. So I'm really glad that Rey is a person who is not connected with the original Skywalker trilogy. But that could all change in episode nine, but I really hope that that's not the case. So another thing that I liked was Luke's send off. Luke is one of those people that a lot of people thought that he was going to stay for the entirety of the film and essentially ride off into the sunset. But Luke has been a conflicted character throughout the entire series and it is humbling to see that he finally found his way in the force and became one with the force and then disappeared he wasn't killed off like han solo was and he wasn't struck down like obi-wan kenobi so i think it was a very fitting death for luke in this sense i do wish that he had more screen time in the trilogy uh, I, I really don't like the fact that they kind of just revealed who Luke was at the end of The Force Awakens and then had him die off in Episode 8. I'm more than confident that he's going to be coming back as a Force ghost, uh, you know, considering the fact that Yoda was in there. And so I think that that's going to be the case. But I really would have liked that Luke had more of a integral part but if they had to kill him off now, uh, this was a really good way to do it. Another thing that I liked, the cinematography of this movie. Now, I really enjoyed the space battles. I, I'm a really big fan of the space battles. Uh, the Return of the Jedi Final Battle of Endor is one of my favorite. And I really enjoyed the fact that they had a really good tension-building space battles in this particular movie. The whole force drive engine thing into the dreadnought was amazing like i didn't really think that that was going to happen so it, it was it was really cool to see that be like when they, like everything gets all quiet one even guy was like whoa and so that that's kind of like i really enjoyed that i've, I've seen the movie twice and both times i felt that that was really fitting uh also with 
Poe and his X-Wing fighting skills. I really like that. Uh, I'm a big fan of the X-Wing, so it was really cool to see a lot of more maneuvers instead of just like a, a regular failing and like banking and everything like that in the original movies. So that was really good. I like that. Okay, so I've explained kind of what I liked about the movie. Now let's get into what I didn't like. And the first off is Poe's humor. I felt that that kind of humor was not a Star Wars type of humor. Uh, basically, case in point, beginning of the movie, Poe comes in and he says that he's on hold for Hux. Like he's got an important message for Hux. And then he kind of trolls him and says like, I'm still waiting uh, on hold and stuff. I I really felt like that that was out of place. I, I know that the uh, you know the humor between like Han in the original trilogy where he picks up the thing and he's like everything's okay. How are you? And that's kind of like where it was. But this dragged on for a good minute or so because Hux even like played into it, and it shows like how they're trying to include marvel style humor into the star wars films but it just feels out of place when they do it like this another thing that i didn't like was rose and finn's storyline i felt that it was unnecessary to the film it actually became plot neutral uh, they were going to essentially get a code breaker to bring back to snoke's ship so that they could disable the hyperspace tracking tool so that way the rebels could escape. They go to this casino island, which was beautiful, by the way. They have like this little subplot where they're, you know, running away from these guards, and they finally find a codebreaker who's not the codebreaker that they were originally looking for, and come all the way back only to be betrayed. And also, even if they were to succeed, by the time that they got back, all of the rebels had escaped in escape pods going to this original rebel base. So it it didn't really make sense for them to even have that adventure. And I felt that you could have probably saved that for something in episode 9 where they go to a casino planet and it drives the plot that way. But for here it just felt like what are we going to have Finn do? And also we're going to add this new character Rose. The last thing that I didn't like about this movie... And it didn't go away after the second viewing was the fact that Leia flew. Now, it just... Leia is a very powerful character. It would have been a real shame if she had died that way. But I think that it was incredibly out of place to have her come back from the dead, so to speak, and then fly to the airlock in space. It just... I personally, I thought to myself, I was like, oh, come on. Like, seriously, you're going to make her do that? I, I would have more rather her have been blown out into space and then another X-Wing or some other ship saves her at the last minute, brings her into the flight deck, they get the medic droids, and then they push her off screen for a little bit. And then that would have made the scene where she busts in to stop Poe much more epic i i think that if you thought that this is how leia goes out that she's kind of like she'll die off screen or something like that to have you know that she'll die off screen to make room for the fact that carrie fisher is no longer with us i think that would have you know you the audience would have thought oh okay this is how leia goes out like she eventually dies off screen you know, Carrie Fisher's no longer with us. I, I see how it is. She'll last until episode nine and it, it'll be, you know, unfortunately she has passed away. And, but then, you know, when she busts in through to stop Poe, then you would have been like, oh my God, she's totally back. Like, I, I think that would have been more epic than having her fly back in through space. Like, I know she's force sensitive, but come on. All right. And now concerns for the future. Uh, what are they going to do for episode 9? Uh, this is kind of a toss-up now because Snoke is dead. Uh, Snoke being killed was one of the shocking moments for this. I did not expect that Snoke was going to die in this movie. 
and I don't know who the big antagonist of this movie is going to be for episode nine. So it's it's going to be really interesting to see like what's going on. Uh, also, Ben and Ray were friends on that battle. Like they were on the battle, they were friends, and then all of a sudden Ray just hates Ben again for some reason and Luke Skywalker's lightsaber busts in half and then she disappears and now Ben hates her again it didn't really sit right I I think that if you're going to have Rey hate Ben again then they were going to be like friends up until the point where the hyperspace crack through the dreadnought happened like that would have made more sense for Ray to just disappear. And so it, it just it kind of feels weird on like what the final battle is going to be. So we'll see how episode nine plays out. Um, you know, we're running out of original trilogy characters, so this is going to be a hopefully a conclusion. I really hope that this ends for Ray, Ben, and the rest of the OG trilogy. And for episode 10, 11, and 12, it's in a completely new trilogy with completely new characters. Because I think that Star Wars fans deserve a new trilogy with new characters. And I think that they can accept that it can happen. But I, I just I think that roping in the original trilogy characters was a bad idea from the start because a lot of people have a lot of connections with Luke, Leia, Han Solo, Chewbacca, R2-D2, and C-3PO, and it's kind of painful to see these guys on life support wondering whether or not these guys are going to be written out. I really think that a new trilogy would have been a sense where these new characters come in, and Luke and Leia, they kind of make cameos, but they're still considered legends, so they're kind of like off-screen a lot of the time. You know, kind of like the way that Yoda came into this movie, you know, that should have been the case, where Luke, you kind of pass by him or something like that. You know, I, I think there's a lot of good ways that they could have done with this movie, but we're now two movies in to a new trilogy. Episode 9 will come out in 2019, hopefully. So we'll have to see what the conclusion is. So I'd actually like to hear your thoughts. Did you like this movie? Did you hate it? Uh, leave a comment down below. And if you like this video, hit a thumbs up. I might do more in the future. And if you're new here, please subscribe. I'm Super Nintendo, and I'll see you next time.